find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the poor. Guys, welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 92. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter from the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk independent pro wrestling. Of course, myself, a video producer here in the area with the local international wrestling cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, of course, the fantastic Indie Wrestling.us. And of course, with me on the line, as usual, from San Antonio, Texas, he is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling down there at Amen to Please on the tweeters. How you doing, Amen? I think we've, we've resolved your internet issues finally. We, we've decided, we've, we've narrowed it down one way or the other. It, we, we will have this podcast one way or the other, hell or high water. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be back, so I'm excited to always be back here on the Indie Mayhem Show. Yes, as renovations still proceed on uh, Sorgatron Media's uh, 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 San Antonio wing, apparently, there. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> we're working on it. Uh, we've got a great guest lined up, of course, uh, on Amon's side here. Uh, but in the meantime, please check us out, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can subscribe to this and so many other shows on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and, of course, video versions on Daily Motion and uh, YouTube. Okay. Maybe not so much this show on Daily Motion, but you can get a lot more wrestling action from us over there as well. And uh, yeah, please uh, drop us a line as always. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, any anybody that's coming up, you have any questions for anybody you think we should be talking about on this very program. Four one two two zero six WMS zero is the hotline, as well as the email address Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Dot com. Big thanks to Basic Sickness for the intro outro music for this, as well as the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Check him out at Pittsburgh Original on basicsickness.com. And of course, everything else, prowrestlingtees.com slash WMS. If you want to support this show and other great indie wrestlers, Eamon, who's on tap for this week? Well, I'm very excited for the guest this week, Sorg. Uh, we've been having a, a lot of string of wrestlers here on the Indie Mayhem Show, but it's good to uh, go back to having somebody who's sort of at the head of a wrestling promotion, mm-hmm. uh, the president of Main Event Pro Wrestling uh, in, the, in the great state of Texas, someone who I think has been doing amazing things uh, uh, lately uh, uh, all across the state of Texas, and we'll definitely be talking to the stuff about, about the stuff that they've been doing over there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show, Mr. Mark Vaughn. Mark, how are you this evening? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me. Really appreciate being on the show. Love the show. Long time listener. And uh, you know, I heard uh, I heard, heard Sora come on with a lot of plugs, man. I love plugs. Awesome. I'm all for them. But I got to get mine in. You know, I'm sitting here. I'm on a Twitter. I just refresh at official MEPW on the Twitters at 999 followers, and I'm really trying <laughs> to break over. I'm trying to cross that line. You know, I'm trying to get to the four digits. So I need all the listeners. I need you to log on to Twitter. I need you to go to add official MEPW. And I need you to click the follow button. We're trying to get this count up. And I'm trying to do it tonight I'm, on this show. I'm sure we get fresh. everyone who's, lis- who's listening live right now to do that. I mean, I'll have it in no time. So anyone listening, <laughs> please, do, please, do, please get the, get up to the four, get them up to the four digits. Um, yeah, that's so all part of being a promoter, man. You got to get the product over. You know, I got to get that official MVP over. <laughs> that's what I do. I live, I, I live in, you know, breathe for this. So thank you guys for having me on. I really appreciate it. So, you know, like Amos said, we know we're out here in Texas. You know, we're doing some big things. Uh, we just had an event. In Henderson, Texas, uh, this last Saturday night, great crowd. Uh, we come there once a year, just like we do all other shows. A uh, little background on me for some that don't know: I've been promoting since 2000. Awesome. Uh, I tried a lot of different stuff, um, from BFW halls, National Guard armories, uh, running monthly in towns, uh, at least a, at least a old grocery store. Refurbished it, redid the inside, re redone it all, put the ring up, tried uh, you know having our own arena. So I, I, I've come in a lot of different directions with promoting uh, professional wrestling. And so when we went back to the drawing board and come out rebranded as Main Event Pro Wrestling, uh, we've had a string of successful events, a uh, lot of sellouts in a row, and so we just went with a lot of different philosophies that have helped make it successful. And 
So, you know, whenever I talk to a lot of people, they're always, you know, well, I'm trying this or I'm trying that. I'm like, look, man, I've tried it. I put the money into it. And, uh, you know, I, I can bet on it that this isn't going to work. And so, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing is, you know, coming up with a philosophy, sticking to the philosophy and, uh, and, and making it work and pushing it through, you know, and recognizing this isn't a business, you know, so sometimes you do have to be a shrewd business person and, uh, you know, get things your way and push things through to make it successful. And so that's really what we've done up here. You know, we, we, we promote events in South Louisiana, uh, North Louisiana, and mostly around East Texas. Uh, we're based out of Tyler, Texas. And so we kind of keep in a realm where we can get to the cities we promote in and really saturate our markets just so we can ensure that we do have the fan base, you know, that we need to, to produce a successful product that we've been able to do. Awesome. Definitely. Uh, I guess the best way to sort of kick things off to get sort of in, in your head a bit as far as like when you get – when you first started in pro wrestling, I guess the best way to start that is uh, kind of the icebreaker question we like to ask everyone, which is uh, uh, what's your first ever memory of uh, watching professional wrestling? Uh, my first ever memory of watching professional wrestling. Uh, I grew up in South Louisiana, and I went with my dad to the local Civic Auditorium. We watched Mid-South when it came through town. So you had the Highway Patrol – uh, Frogman, LeBlanc, uh, you know, Jimmy Garvin, and, and guys like this who were just coming through, you know, working these local events in, in, in southern Louisiana. And my dad was a fan, so, you know, he would take me out to the uh, to the Civic Center, to the auditorium in the town we were living in. And so we would go see, we would go see southern style wrestling. And so my earliest memories of that was just always, you know, being with my father go and watch wrestling. I was one of the kids who grew up, you know, with their dad taking them up there to the, uh, to the wrestling, you know? And then awesome. I grew up on NWA wrestling and, you know, WCW, you know, that's how it is in the South. And then, uh, that's pretty much it, you know? Very cool. So would you say, uh, that, that Southern style of wrestling really, really was what got you like sort of, I, I guess the best way to put it sort of that, that old school, uh, style of professional wrestling is is what what sort of aspects of that style kind of really intrigued you? Would you say? I guess it was just the characters for me weren't as outlandish, you know, as what you know the WWE was producing at the time. And so you know to watch Ric Flair and uh, you know I'll go as far as Sting. I mean, he had face paint on and stuff like that in the late eighties and whatnot. But, uh, you know, the, the, the characters weren't so outlandish. When I, when I flipped the, the channel over to something else, it just wasn't, uh, it just wasn't appealing to me at the time. Later on in life, I did, you know, make a transition to a different product. But, you know, at the time growing up, and of course, you live in the South, so you get TBS, you get, you know, the, the directed pro programming because, you know, channels were limited. Uh, growing up in South Louisiana, I'm a huge baseball fan. I know it's a little off topic, but living in South Louisiana, you get TBS. So you get the Braves, uh, the Yankees are syndicated nationwide. So you get the Yankees. And uh, I live in Texas. I go to Rangers games. I go to Astros games. But I'm a Yankees fan. You were either a Yankees fan or a Braves fan because you didn't have a baseball team. So it's kind of the mm -hmm. same thing with wrestling. You know, that's just, uh, that's just what you got on TV, uh, which is what you got live. You know, at the Civic Auditorium, at the Civic Center in the next town, because we'd go catch all the wrestling we could. Dad was a huge fan. And so that's just what was targeted at us, you know. And so that's that's why you grew up, you know, I guess in the South, liking liking what you liked, you know. It was all it was the only option you had for a long time. Definitely. And then we'll go into obviously when we talk more about Man Event, but I do think I, and correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like you definitely embrace some of the, some of those aspects of, of that style of wrestling, while also using some of the newer newer stuff. You seem like newer newer style of wrestling. Uh, obviously, sure. we're, we'll get obviously we'll get into that a, a bit more. But uh, uh, going into actually getting into the wrestling business, uh, uh, how did that come about? Uh, what was your first sort of break in as far as like getting into the wrestling business? Well, we had we had moved from South Louisiana into into Houston. 
uh, at an early age. And what ended up happening was we, you know, like I said, my father was a huge wrestling fan. He took us to a, an indie wrestling show, Texas All-Star Wrestling, based out of Humble, Texas, one of the longest-running wrestling promotions uh, going today. Uh, they are partnered up with uh, some other guys uh, producing a product called Infamous Wrestling, which will be uh, making its debut event, Rockdale, Texas, this Saturday night. So, you know, everybody check it out. It's uh, infamouswrestling.com. And we went to a Texas All-Star Wrestling event. I was about 13. Uh, makes my dad about 33 at the time, maybe 32-ish. And so we went and watched this, and they had Wichita Willie, uh, Humongous. I mean, just the randomest indie wrestling guys ever. And uh, Tugboat Taylor, Chaz Taylor, you know, the Houston independent wrestling scene. So it was our first exposure to it. I had a wrestling mm-hmm. school. My dad went to wrestling school. Uh, part of the uh, part of the thing was uh, the family got involved. My mom started helping with uh, merchandise, concessions, stuff like that. My dad was hauling the ring, uh, wrestling, and I ended up doing sound. So I started out as a sound guy at about you know 15 years of age for Texas All Star Wrestling, working for Bob Murphy, uh, two three nights a week for for a good good few years. You know, until I was old enough to train uh, myself personally. So that's that's what broke me in. You know, it was just uh, my dad went in with Bob, and so that's where we ended up at. Awesome, definitely. And uh, obviously, with your family linked to sort of uh, the the independent scene, uh, was it what what was the uh, part of you that kind of you know obviously with, with how main event came to me. Uh, how did that transition come from you, from you, uh, you doing those sort of small jobs to, you know, becoming a promoter in the state of Texas? Well, the thing was, uh, you know, like I said, my dad was all in the ring. He was wrestling. My mom's uh, working in the concession stand, and I'm doing sound. So we're doing a lot of the physical labor. Now, at the, the time, you know, I'm 15, 16. I was born in 81, you know, so go ahead and date myself. So you're looking at 97. You're looking at the, 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 you know, the golden era of pro wrestling here, you know. And at the time, Texas All-Star Wrestling was, uh, you know, you'd go on a Friday night to 1,000 people, a Saturday night to 1,100, and a Sunday matinee event to 900 people. And so at the end of the night on Friday, you know, my dad, myself, a few other guys were tearing the ring down, loading it up, going to the next show, setting up, you know, queuing everything up. And so we're doing a lot of the labor and there was a lot of money being made, you know? And so if you're going to put in all that work, you know, you can either work uh, hard making someone else's dreams come true, or you can work hard making your own dream come true. And so we took the, uh, the, the road to uh, making our own dreams come true, which is what you see coming into fruition now. Awesome. And, and, would you say there would be, um, I mean, obviously anyone who kind of has talked to a, a promoter of wrestling knows sort of like the difficulties of, you know, fostering a wrestling company. Did you notice any early early difficulties and, and were you surprised by anything sort of in the early goings? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's difficult to really put all these things together. Um, it's hard to transition from being, you know, a wrestler to a promoter and a booker and work different positions. You learn what you can and can't do, where you can and can't go, what's acceptable and not acceptable. And, you know, you, you see what made certain things successful. You know, one of the biggest things that makes main event as successful as it's been, you know, I mean, our, our event in May, you know, we had almost 1,500 people in Carthage, Texas. Uh, it's our biggest event of the year. It's a, it's like our WrestleMania. We call it King's Road. We had uh, you know Safari come out with a zebra. Uh, Tim Storm rode a uh, custom Artel chopper to the ring. Uh, so we do a lot of stuff like that. But the, the difference maker is is uh, not part timing things, and it's a lot harder when you're working a full time job and trying to you know organize stuff because you're not totally invested. You know with with main event. You know, we've got full timers on board. That 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 is the key to, to making it successful. That was the key that made Texas All Star Wrestling at the time so successful. Was that's what Bob Murphy did for a living. You know, I'm on the road right now. This is what I do for a living. And so, when you're counting on this business, you know, to 
to turn the lights on to provide for Christmas and to put food on the table, then you have a completely different directive than, you know, well, my job's going to pay my bills. So, you know, whatever this does, you know, it takes that hobby, hobby aspect out of it. You know, it's not just something you're interested in. So, you know, that's, that's, that's one of the biggest challenges that people will face is, is their time management. And it's, it's very difficult to, to be full time into something, you know, and to get off and then you've got your family and you're trying to spend time with them. You're trying to talk to wrestlers. You're trying to get your, your promotion stuff together and manage your budget. You, you, you know, and then a lot of times you don't have time to go, you know, for example, find sponsors or you end up funding the whole project out of pocket and you don't have time to put into it to, to make it to where it can really support itself. You have the dream, you have the vision, but you're not really out there on that limb. And so once you get out there, it, it's a total game changer. It changes everything. Definitely. Um, and you kind of definitely mentioned it in the early goings as well was the aspect of uh, treating you know a company like a business. And <coughs> I noticed that a lot with you guys especially. Uh, uh, particularly with your, the stuff that you've been doing in the community as well, it seems like uh, sure. you, you know the stuff you guys do. I've seen press conferences that you guys do. Obviously, uh, you you try to I think book more than just wrestling shows. Would you say that's that's kind of uh, your philosophy? Absolutely. You know, we want each event. Uh, you know, it's main event, and so we really build around our main event uh, with with. You know, coming and going with a lot of talent. The one thing I know for certain that I'm going to have is going to be the main event. You know, a lot of promotions will produce. Uh, they'll promote their whole card to people. I just promote my main event because I know for certain this, this is locked in. But I think it, you take the press conferences, you take uh, what we do, you know, in the schools, and you put it all together. And, you know, you really want to get your product out there as much as possible because, you know, I, I don't like the word promoter. I, I really do believe it has a negative connotation, but mm -hmm. you have to, promote, you know, it's a wrestling promotion. So you have to promote it. You have to get it all out there because that's, what's going to get your fans in. You got to have a fan base or, or you're not providing anything to the sponsors who back you, for example, you know, they're, they're, they're under the impression you're going to have a full house. So you got to have a full house, you know, to, to deliver the product you sold them. And then at the same time, you've got to get it out there. So you can't just sit back on on social media and some flyers and, and, and really hope for the best whenever you're at that level. And so we take every avenue possible to get our product out to the, the fans in whichever city we're producing an event at. And so anything and everything possible, that's what we'll do because, you know, we're, we're our, our goal, our job, our job is to get, you know, these fans in the venue for the event. Definitely. Um, we mentioned uh, about some of the relationships <coughs> when it comes to sort of starting a wrestling promotion. What would you say in, in the time of, of main event uh, has been your biggest achievement so far? What's, what's the achievement that you're uh, most proud of? The consecutive events where we've had full houses while being a touring wrestling company is, you know, really what we're really, we're proud of. That's what we put a lot of work into. Uh, we go into those communities. Uh, we meet with the people. You know, we really bring the wrestlers into town uh, a week early, sometimes two weeks early. And, and we get out there in the community. Uh, if, if they're having a food drive, we're going to go food drive with them. And so we're going to be we're going to be wherever the people are because we want them to know. You know, we're not we're not fly by night. We're coming in. We're going to do good deeds. We want to help with the town. We want to be a part of the town. We want to be this town's wrestling company. You know, uh, the fair comes once mm -hmm. a year. The wrestling comes once a year. The pro rodeo comes once a year. We want to be that attraction. And so we don't want, you know, people to think that, you know, we're just going to show up. We're going to set a ring up. We're going to throw a curtain under an exit sign. And, and, and we're going to take your money and go. You know, we, we want to be a part of the community that we produce our events in. And so that's, that's really what we built our, ourselves upon in doing, you know, with our circuit. We, we, we run events from October through May. We, we start in Henderson. Uh, I'm on the road right now. Our next event, which I haven't put out there, but you know, I'll go ahead and talk about now. is going to be a 
November 14th at Memorial uh, Gymnasium at Louisiana Tech University. So nice. I'm on the road now. We're working on it. Uh, you know, we've got an event every month. Uh, you know, in 2016, we're back in Marshall, Mansfield, Louisiana, uh, Meridian, Texas. King, you know, everything's going to lead up to Kings Road in Carthage in May. So we have our schedule for our circuit already laid out for this year, you know, for our, for our October to May run. And then we're adding on some, some cities for the, the, the next tour. We take a break during the summer. Uh, you know, it's hot. We've got vacation. You know, a lot of people are in a lot of different places. And so, you know, we really put our product together, go back to the drawing board, you know, see what works, see what didn't work. It gives us time to really think about it and to, you know, use the network we've built up in these, you know, communities to help us continue to promote our product. Because you got to understand, you know, if you bring in 1,200 people, they'll see the show, say it was a great show, you know, it could have been the best show ever. 1,200 people aren't going to come back the next time they see you. You know, you're going to lose some fans. You're going to have a churn rate. So you're going to lose, you know, say two, 300 fans. You've got to create two or 300 new fans to replace those. And if you want to grow your fan base, you've got to find another two or 300 fans to add on to that. So it's never, you know, there's no end game. You know, uh, McDonald's is, is wonderful to a lot of people, but they still run commercials. They still advertise and still market because, you know, somebody mm-hmm. might go eat something, and not like it. So you've got to replace these customers. And so that's how you really have to look at it. So you're always moving. You're always on the go. And you're always planning. So our circuit, you know, we run from October through May. You know, we hit our we hit our towns. We've got our markets. We've got our networks. And so our biggest, you know, success so far is from whatever. Before, you know, we were producing events at Full Effect Wrestling. We rebranded. Went back to the drawing board. Set out those philosophies I discussed earlier. So this is how we're going to operate. You know, this is what a lot of people say they should do, but nobody really does. But this is what we're going to do, and we're going to stick to this and and come out, you know, come out fighting, you know, firing guns off the battleship here, that we've been able to do what we planned on doing. We, we made a plan. We're working our plan. And so that's our biggest thing right now is that, you know, we, we come into these towns, and when people see what we're producing – you know, on social media, like our Twitter, at official MEPW, they see these pictures, you know, uh, of nice full houses, professional setup, you know, high production value, and we bring a professional product. And so that's what we strive to deliver, and it helps the fans buy into it. It helps the community buy into it because, like I said, you're not just setting a ring up throwing a curtain somewhere. You're bringing what they would assimilate as professional wrestling as close to it as you can for, you know, independent professional wrestling to their community. And so for us, the work that everybody's put in to get those results, that's been our, our, our biggest, you know, accomplishment so far is to be able to keep running these successful events, to have a formula, to have a system, to make it work. Definitely. And, and, and that's a great achievement to have. Um Going into some of uh, some of our regular questions here on the show that we we tend to ask everyone, uh, the first one that we have is: uh, Is there any uh, specific wrestling that you're watching currently, uh, either uh, just for recreation or for if you even are studying certain things? I watch everybody. I study <laughs> yeah. everybody. I watch WWE. I watch uh, reality of wrestling. I watch NXT. I watch, you know, promotions in Austin. I watch who they book, what it does to their attendance, uh, how it gets them over, say, on the dirt sheets. Uh, same for San Antonio, Dallas, Memphis, you name it. I, I live and breathe wrestling. If you have a product on YouTube, I'm watching it. If I can TiVo uh, New Japan on Axis, I'm watching it. Ring of Honor, you name it. I'm studying, you know, uh, their production qualities. I'm looking at angles that they're running. I'm looking at stuff that their commentators are doing, placement of certain things. So I watch it. I watch everything because I want to see. It's like a case study is how I put it to you know people. I watch and see what mm-hmm. this person does, what this product does, what this brand does, who they're using, how it gets them over, and on the business end, what kind of money does it make them? And is it worth it, you know, for, for me to go in and do something similar or not? Did that work for them? 
either yes or no. And so I watch everything because, and that's what I say, that's the difference maker when you're doing this for a living. This is my profession. This is what I do, you know, running this wrestling company. And, you know, I've got a wife and three kids. And so this is, you live it. You know, I live this. And so I watch it all, all of it, all the time, 24 hours a day. If I'm not watching it, it's on somewhere and I'm listening to it. Awesome. Very cool. Um, and the final question that we ask is uh, a question that we ask all our guests, and, and many of our guests take it in many different directions, so feel free to yes. any which that way. Yes, that official MPW, uh, right. But, uh, the question that we have uh, is, is what is the best and the worst thing about independent wrestling? Oh, hang on, hang on. I'm logging on to my Twitter again. I got to <laughs> – I see some notifications. What are you going on here? Yes, we got it. 1,003 followers. I need there to retweet. Tweet at me, and I'll retweet you. I'll follow you back. Oh, <laughs> y'all, y'all are awesome. Uh, the best and worst things about independent wrestling. Uh, man, the best thing is the fans. You know, seeing the smile on the kids' faces. Uh, you, you know, I know you're associated with uh, Inspire. We had Brandon Stroud out to announce. Our, our last event, make sure you check that guy out on Twitter. He's super awesome, super polite. Couldn't ask for a more professional guy than, than Brandon himself, you know. But he was there, and you have, you know, moments, you know, during our main event of Jinder Mahal challenging uh, Big Daddy Yum Yum for the main event heavyweight title. And when you can take that barrier of a, illusion and reality and mix it up and you look out and you've got a house full of people and what's happening right then is real. It, it doesn't get any realer, you know, and you can see the wonderment on these kids' faces and them cheering and, 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 and they believe and you believe and, I mean, you seriously believe and everybody's just bought in. Oh, that's the best part. You know, the fans are the best part about independent wrestling. Uh, and I don't care if you're looking at something like Pro Wrestling Gorilla and slow motion. I love entertainment, <laughs> so I, I'm not I'm not going to bury that. I, I like that. You know, that's what their fan base likes. And so to <laughs> see the fans buy into something like that, to see the fans at Ring of Honor throw streamers, uh, you, you know, to, to see the fans that inspire, clap when someone's got to go, all of that. The fans are the very best part, and they're, they, they're what make independent wrestling what it is you know when anybody has that dream of being a professional wrestler you start on that grassroots level your dream is always your music playing you're coming out the curtain and you're getting getting that pop from the crowd that that is it you know you haven't even made it to the ring yet you just come out and so you know on any level of professional wrestling you know if, if it wasn't for the fans we, we wouldn't be able to do what we do but if it wasn't for the fans we wouldn't even want to do you know what we do. So the very best part for me is the fans. And that's, that's, that's why, I, you know, I even spoke about the case study earlier. I watch them. I see what do they do when companies are directing their products. So, you know, that's the very best thing. Uh, the worst thing. Oh Lord. Let me get my shovel out the back of the truck. So we can, <laughs> we can all head to, to Berrytown. Uh, man, you know, uh, workers, professional wrestlers, they're the worst thing. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the ones who don't belong, uh, you know, uh, you, you got certain people who really should be purchasing a ticket who aren't purchasing a ticket. And then you've got companies that allow them to keep going. And uh, I'm not just, I've got a list of names, but I'm throwing it out the window. I'm messing, well, I'm in Louisiana, so I'm messing with Louisiana, but I ain't messing with Texas. But uh, before I start rattling it off, but you know, it's just, uh, just workers. But, uh, you know, I love the fans. And so the workers have a way, you know, it's like a, the, the cream always rises to the top. Start your coffee up. That foam's going to come up, and, and that's where the best workers are going to come from, your best wrestlers, your best athletes. They're going to come out, and, and they're going to truly shine, and so they expose themselves just like the others do. And so 
the worst part, terrible wrestlers. The best part, awesome fans. So, uh, you know, I, I never really think about it. You know, it's really the first time I thought about, well, what's the worst part, you know, of independent wrestling? Uh, you know, you know failure is a terrible thing. You know, uh, when you try to do something and it doesn't work out, when you look out in the arena and there's 22 people sitting there as a promoter and, you know, you failed and, so there's a whole lot of different ways to go about it. You know, as a wrestler, you go out, uh, you, you don't you don't make it happen that night. And so uh, it just depends on, on, on your viewpoint, you know, and what angle you're looking at. But I, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I just look at the positives. You know, I look at the, the what's good, what's going to make it better, and how can we make it the best. And so I don't really... Uh, I don't really dwell on the negatives. I, I, I really stay in reality, you know, you know, based in reality, what worked, what didn't work, what kind of feedback we're getting, and, you know, what do we have to do to ensure that a successful operation can stay successful and a successful operation can continue to grow and to control the growth at a rate where, you know, we can still produce quality over quantity. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, why don't you run more than once a month? You know, well... At the time, you know, like I said, we got full timers, but it's hard to, you know, get into these, you know, cities and, and do what we're doing while handling the business in. And so it takes up a lot of time. And I don't want to water down our product where, you know, we're, we're producing more events. But if I can do one event and draw 1,200 people, why would I want to do two events that, you know, are going to draw 300 people, you know, when I would have been more successful? working really hard and focusing all my energy on this one event. And so, you know, that's, that's, that's what, you know, our key thing at main event is just, you know, sticking to the philosophy and, and, and seeing it through and not straying away from it. So every now and then you got to wing it, you know, but, uh, it, it, that's been our guiding principle and that's what's, uh, helped carry us through. Awesome, definitely. Um, yeah, definitely. Thank you very much, Mark, for uh, coming on. Uh, I really love talk, uh, getting to hear your side of things. It seems like you guys at Main Event uh, uh, have a real good, you know, idea of, of your audience. And you got a good business sense, and it is is really good to see, you know, a promotion, you know, get that successful and and, re and really make something special. So it's, uh, hats off to you and, and, and your team. Uh, I know you mentioned us uh, uh, some of your upcoming dates. Uh, but uh, feel free to please promote them again, and also if anyone can follow you on social media uh, to get over, again, we can get get you over a thousand. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm all about it, man. Thank you guys so much. We just launched an Instagram a couple of weeks ago. I've got a lot of pictures from the event. I haven't put them up there, but uh, our Instagram, our Facebook, our Twitter, it's all at official MEPW. So go out, like us, share us, retweet us, uh, blow my phone up, please. You know, I encourage you as much as possible and uh like i said you know you give me a follow i'll follow you back i'm all about you know checking everybody out you know i'm studying everybody i'm studying everything and uh i want to get good quality professional wrestling you know out as much as i can you know bring a professional product to, to, to pro wrestling fans and uh, thank awesome. you guys so much for for letting me come on and and speak my piece and and promote my product and get get over this thousand uh thousand follower hump. Huh? Now I gotta figure out how to get to two thousand. And then three and then maybe I can get to if I can get to ten like Brandon Stroud, I'll be all right. I'll be making it. <laughs> I gotta build some of his followers. He's got all the followers, you know, he's sucking them all up. <laughs> You'll have to share some of the love. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, thank you very much again, Mark, for coming on the show. Uh, we're going to take right. a quick break. Uh, and in that uh, in that break, you guys can take a, a quick look at everything that happened this past week in Silvertron Media. We'll be right back. Yeah. I don't mean to be indelicate, but uh, uh, do we have children to watch this show? Because I feel that perhaps they should not be watching this one. I'm here with a fellow podcaster, Buzzy Torek of the Epicast Network. If you just want to try a podcast, I'd say start doing them on your phone, get good at it. Like, we have an, a popular podcast from Pittsburgh that is done all on an iPhone. Mm -hmm. I despise listening to it when I engineer it, but it, it it's there and people people don't don't seem to mind. It. Just record, record your conversations and start getting better at, at having those conversations. That is 
Jay Briscoe. There is no hype. There is no hyperbole. But it was a Ring of Honor camp. He walked in. He was one of the coaches. And he had a stalk of raw broccoli in his hand. And he's taken chunks out of it as he's giving us instructions and telling us what to do and how to, uh, you know, where to be aggressive and where, and just raw broccoli. And there was a part of me like, is he helping with me? Is, is this? <laughs> um, I understood that, that it was a business and that you were working for someone and that you were taking someone's ideas and um, influence and making it your own. And... I believe that you have to be extremely patient. I've been extremely patient. Today. I didn't expect anything to be just handed over to me. I've wanted to work for it and I wanted to earn it. And it, it you know, I feel like if it's given to you, um, it's kind of, I don't know, it kind of depreciates it and devalues it. I'm probably not your typical use case. I'm at my desk when I'm working for work, which is low process or low memory intensive. I'm up here for the show. When I'm actually working on video, I'm usually on my couch. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so like right now I'm plugged into this huge monitor, right? If I if I were to edit video and, and hit render or, or save or whatever to, to actually render the video, I would grab the laptop and take it with me and open it up. Hey guys, and uh, check out everything going on at SorgatronMedia.com, Sawtooth Willie, that interview I had with Buzzy over there with Epicast, and so much more. So, and an awesome, awesome interview. Check out uh, Main Event Pro Wrestling down there in Texas. A lot of stuff online. A lot of great videos. I've shown them off there a little bit during the interview. <laughs> and uh, if you're on the audio, go ch- definitely check out there. Uh, I'm getting retweeted by him right now. <laughs> All over the place. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, uh, but yeah, yeah, go check that out. Some really cool stuff they're doing. And again, like I said real professional. They're bringing in twelve hundred people there once a month. That's a, that's awesome. That's awesome to see that they're they're doing that 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 good good stuff. Um, so uh, locally, uh, some good stuff happening with us. IWC Wrestling's Unbreakable event was this past weekend. I was a part of that, of course, on the video production side of things, and it was a very interesting event. And, and, and I don't know, I don't know if you have this, Eamon, and, and and I I battle with this. Um, I look at a card like IWC's, and I don't know, as a fan, as somebody integrated in it, I look at a card and say, this is a good card, you know, mm-hmm. kind of knowing the guy's going. I don't know if the fans look at it the same way, but I was really, uh, you know, for for a show that didn't have, it did have star power on it. It didn't have Rhino on it, right? It did have Marty Bell of TNA, but but this, I liked the concepts going into this one. Um I like that we had two women's matches. I like that we had mm-hmm. two tag team matches going into this thing, right? Uh, leading to what's going to be a four-way for for the title here in in December. And, and, and Eamon, I, I don't know if you know, uh, there's actually a pretty good history with four-way tag matches in IWC. Yeah, like, I've uh, I've heard a lot about that history, definitely. And especially when you guys, you and the rest of the Mayhem crew first started going to IWC, mm-hmm. it seemed to be like their big thing. So. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 I think you can even see there's a match going around uh, with people tagged with their current Lucha Underground names and everything with you know Ray Rowe and J Rock versus uh, Shima Zion and Gory versus uh, the Gambino <laughs> brothers versus the sexual harassment or versus Facade and, and Johnny Gargano you know like that is that mm-hmm. sequence of people that had these amazing four way matches that just was were tremendous for the day right. And, and they did several of them. And it became a staple of that era of IWC. And it looks like they're trying to return that to the point where the Gambino brothers are actually going to come back for the match coming up here in December. Nice. So, um, and already a part of it, the Founding Fathers and, uh, and uh, the Fraternity, who's actually a, an up-and-coming team, actually. That's, it's a nice classic team that has this frat boy mentality to it. And, uh, and, they, <laughs> and, 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 and they play with us on social media, and I'm loving it. Uh, definitely check them out. I, I can never remember. It's one of those things where I know the team, but I haven't separated who's who and the names underneath it. You know, back when you didn't know who which Matt and Jeff Hardy were. You know, kind of. That's right. where they're. That's where they're at with me. So, <laughs> but <laughs> but they've been really awesome uh, with stuff and a really good addition with IWC. Um, but the big things, first of all, uh, uh, a friend of the show, Jimmy DeMarco. Uh, not so much wrestling, but uh, he's in an angle where he just wants to get a kiss from Ashley, Joe Rose's girlfriend. 
um, fiance, <laughs> wherever the hell she is, right? And as, as Jimmy DeMarco does. As Jimmy DeMarco does. And I don't know if, if you've seen the promo he did where he had a poem that didn't entirely rhyme uh, leading into this show. Uh, but he just came out. Uh, he came out to kiss the girl from The Little Mermaid uh, during his match with uh, 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 De Niro and you know, interrupted Joe Rosa and, and, and was uh, stalking? Uh, 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 Ashley, and um, and and led to the longest rant I think I've heard since J Rock and IWC. Um, wh- which I don't even know where it went with stuff. Um, uh, Joe Joe Rosa and, and and Ashley left about three times and came back because I think they're waiting for <laughs> the thing that was supposed to happen. I kept like, do I get them? They're leaving, you know. And I'm trying to cue the cameras, and uh, and and and, right. and, and uh, you find uh, somebody yelled a plumber fest. Uh, J- Justin Plummer, the promoter currently with IWC, um, and I love that that authentically happened, right? And uh, <laughs> and it just leads to Demarco pleading with Plummer to uh, have some sort of match at the next show, the big show in December, which uh, is going to be a he gets his kiss, and he's not he's just saying he wants a kiss. Right, that's all he mm-hmm. wants. And if he loses, he gets a restraining order. So I don't know if you've ever heard of this. It's a kiss versus <laughs> a restraining order match. <laughs> first, I mean, there's a first time for everything. I guess you could say. So there's been a lot of firsts in IWC in the recent years. So i it, it's always good <laughs> but that's good that's good um and of course uh and i think i think uh, other friend of the show news dylan bostic uh uh andrew palace i believe is going to be a fro versus belt match oh so, wow yeah yeah so a lot on the line <laughs> a lot on the line because have you seen that beautiful head of hair of his um but uh and and more in, in, impressive so uh in the main event match uh, was a uh, three-way Rhino, uh, Jimmy Nuts, and John McChesney, which was fantastic. Great match. A lot of awesome, awesome talents. There's a really good video going around of Jordy, um, this uh, handicapped dude that, that actually announced Big League to the ring. I think they brought back down from Erie with him, uh, official part of Team Big League. So that was a really cool thing that happened. And really nice. cool dude. Like, like He's awesome. Uh, somebody... Some, Somebody, somebody uh, saw the video and said Wheels has competition out there. So, oh. <laughs> as far oh. as as far as that goes, um, but uh, uh, no, that was real cool. And 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 that's when something interesting and authentic uh, happened at the end of that match. Uh, it ends with one of those uh, double ref bumps. Both refs see a pin, and both declare a champion. Right, um, mm-hmm. and you think that's going to be over. But I think the crowd had a little bit of something to do with what transpired next. And I don't know, Eamon, have you <laughs> have you seen something in pro wrestling? And I and I, I think, you know, you're you're probably given enough of a heads up of things going on where you know how things were supposed to go. And you mm-hmm. realize how far off off the path you are when it comes to what's supposed to be happening in the ring. I, I, have you found yourself in this situation, uh, or at least uh, witnessing it, at least from your booth position? Oh, definitely. <laughs> uh, uh, definitely. I think uh, there's a level of... Uh, wrestling is a weird uh, form of entertainment. Uh, I, it, there's a lot of... There's an aspect of improvisation that's always... I mean, sometimes <laughs> stuff happens in ring and, and stuff goes bad or whatever when mm-hmm. stuff needs to get changed. Um, but yeah, I, it, it's always good to keep... I, I, that's the biggest lesson I've always learned is to always keep on your toes. Always be prepared for what may may come. You know? oh, I was not prepared for any of this, um, especially Jimmy DeMarco of all things. I, well, we've seen... I think, I think in the final match of the last two Super Indie tournaments... Somebody has gotten knocked out in the three way, like legitimately knocked out cold in the three way, mm-hmm. and which led to awkward things to happen. But of course, it's like, well, he got knocked out. You have to work around that. You know what I mean? It, it was an accident, and 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 that's it. Not it wasn't a, it wasn't a botch. It wasn't. It was just he he got hit the wrong way, and which I guess is a botch in the long run. Uh, but but you get what I'm getting at, right? It wasn't a you yeah. know an audible or something like that. Um, and, and without too, getting too much into it, I think it's going to be pretty obvious if you want 
watch the tape back. But I think that uh, uh, IWC's Unbreakable had the greatest sequence of, uh, of 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 audibles that I've ever seen in pro wrestling, and it was really cool. Uh, I think as a fan, uh, it was. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to use the word historic, but I was just like something really amazing is happening right now, uh, as we're witnessing mm-hmm. what 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 went down there. But uh, but no, go check it out. It is going to be over on IndieWrestling.us here in the coming days. Uh, we're still actually I'm waiting for the rest of the commentary to come through for it uh, since uh, Joe Nebrowski is uh, apparently wanted everywhere, and uh, and <laughs> we, we have to get our uh, commentary in post. So it's going to take me a few days uh, to get that and then get that synced and then get it to you on the fantastic pro wrestling website so um but no a really fun night uh uh, you know up and down uh i I think one that women's wrestling is a part of this the talent i can't think of two even the weak links i could come up with with iwc right now aren't really that weak of links you know what i mean like it really feels like um you know, I've commented before about things that I thought were supposed to be throwaway matches if I'm looking at that card at the beginning of the night turn into something meaningful if only for like a mid card something or other. Um, you know, like the, for instance, the Dylan Boss, the Keith Hot stuff from earlier in the year where they're like bringing out cupcakes for him. And then Tommy Dreamer eats it from under the ring later in the night. And that gets weird. But <laughs> still, um, there seems to be a reason for everything that on that card, and I'm really impressed with that. They're not throwaway matches. They're not like, well, we got these two guys. Let's have them go, you know. And 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 it it feels like the old raw mentality that we always hear about and and pine for, right? Uh, the old attitude era. Where everybody on the, on the on the show had a, a spot and a purpose. And and it's been a while since I've seen an indie show on this regular basis that felt like it had that, you know, well, why are we, you know, every, you watch an indie show and you're like, well, why are we doing this again? You know, it's, it's an indie show is then you know, our, our guest tonight talked about like kind of the purpose and what works and doesn't work, you know? And I think, I think, yeah. you know, it's very interesting. And, and, and you can talk about like, Oh, well, this progresses this story and, and what, you know, how that storytelling works and, and, and length and everything like that. Um, but I think they made a lot of strides for this and I think it's going to be really strong going into, uh, what they're doing in December. Unfortunately, no November show for them. Um, but uh, but but uh, I think that, that that's that may only help uh, people, uh, you know, focus for uh, that December show. You know what I mean? So, um, mm-hmm. but no, real cool stuff. Real real cool stuff. Uh, anything coming out going on in your what's what's got your attention, uh, Eamon? Well, there there's been some cool stuff happening uh, in independent wrestling this past week. Uh, uh, a lot of it has been detailed courtesy our, to our good friend of the mainstream media, Matt Carlins, mm-hmm. uh, over on IndieWrestling.us in his Around the Indies column, uh, which you should definitely check out. Uh, we mentioned before, it's always a great primer. Uh, if you've missed anything in the indie world, it covers a lot of the big stuff. The biggest stuff is usually, or I shouldn't say usually, uh, is coming especially from Evolve this past weekend. Uh, Evolve 4950 was this past weekend. Uh, Johnny Gargano and Ethan Page, I heard, had a really amazing I Quit match. Uh, there was a lot of obviously really great action with Evolve, uh, with Evolve Wrestling and the talent they're bringing in. Uh, there's also a special appearance by a, a certain someone by the name of Sami Zayn. Ooh. I don't know if you've heard of him. What? Some guy. Where? Some guy. Nice hat. <laughs> yeah, nice hat. Um, uh, yeah, uh, there's been a lot of teasing of a working relationship between WWE and, and Evolve Wrestling, and, and particularly Oh, we're losing you. We're losing you, Eamon. I think you're going to say particularly interesting uh, of, e- of Ethan Page's uh, Triple H style entrance over here. Uh, that's that's detailed on this uh, uh, Twitter video. Uh, that that's that's pretty interesting. And we'll see if uh, we get you back here, Eamon. Uh, but no, it's a great Sami Zayn promo uh, included in this as well. Uh, so we're going to have to check that out a little bit later on my end. Uh, so catching up with this. Uh, no, I think that's really interesting. And, and as I think you were getting at, you know, what is this kind of working relationship going on between WWE and Evolve Wrestling? I know uh, we really have, uh, you know, Gabe Sapolsky has been popping up in a lot of documentaries in, in in the last couple of years. So I don't think this is a new development. I think this is just a a, a public face of this development. Uh, Amen. I, I was talking about the you know the little bit of that 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 kind of connection it seems to be with Evolve and WWE not being new. 
you know, because Gabe's been around. You've seen Gabe in the CM Punk documentary, right? I mean, no, definitely. I, I think. I, I think. I think this isn't a. I mean, it's not like he just. It's not a case of Triple H picking a promoter out of nowhere and saying, "Hey, I want to work with you." Yeah. Um, but I, I, it's very interesting to have an, an, an indie wrestling thread get that kind of recognition. I mean, it's been shared by first that WWE put out an article recently on their website about the top five stars from Evolve that could be coming to WWE. Wow. Um, really? Wow. Yeah. I mean, well, remember, I mean, they've even, WWE has given a rub to Ring of Honor in recent years as well. You know, again, you know, in mm-hmm. their documentaries and on their website, you know, of, hey, before, you know, before us, they did this thing at Ring of Honor, right? I mean, I think, I think these are kind of settling into, not officially, maybe evolve more officially, but I mean, ECW, they, there was a deal with ECW, like very, yeah. like, we know that now. We know there was a deal with ECW now um of some sort and or agreement or whatever the case may be uh you know i i think evolve like they're looking for that like where else are we going to get our talent from well if they come through evolve they're probably pretty decent right um Mm -hmm. because evolve doesn't get green people that i'm aware of uh the little (laughs) bit i know about evolve i've never watched an evolve show but you know just what i know of it i mean look at the guys in there you know and like it uh, it makes sense with gargano and uh tomaso yeah, recently appearing on NXT. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I like that. I also like that they, on NXT especially, because um, recently on NXT, they'll have people like Gargano or Ciampa come in. I, uh, I know uh, last week they had Evie, who's a big female wrestler from the uh, New Zealand area, uh, just come in and introduce them and say, hey, this, are, this is who these people are. Um, that's really cool. You know, I think it is a changing of the ways for how WWE treats independent wrestling. Mm-hmm. And that's cool. That's really cool to see. Um yeah, that's that's really cool. I heard both events for Evolve were, were phenomenal, so go check those out. You can watch them back on wwnlive.com. Uh, there was also uh, the debut event for uh, uh, the very famous uh, female wrestling uh, promotion in Japan uh, called Stardom. Uh, they had their uh, first ever Stardom USA to- uh, uh, event uh, in Co- in California. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, recent uh, inductee in the WWE Hall of Fame, Medusa is the figurehead, uh, I guess commissioner is the best way to put it, for stardom. Hmm. Uh, so one of the things was that the, that was announced with her uh, her joining there is that they're going to be expanding, and obviously with this, these uh, shows in the U.S. is a part of that. So U.S. wrestling fans got to see a bit of Japanese Joshi-style wrestling uh, involved in that. So it, it seemed like a really great show. I believe... It will be out uh, in some DVD, some some availability in which you can view it uh, sometime soon. Uh, definitely, we'll have to check for more updates on that. Uh, the other, uh, the last. Oh, thing oh, I want to, I want to, I want to point out here, Eamon. So I put up this uh, article that I linked from Pro Wrestling Is Art uh, WordPress, yes. and I love their belt is uh, World of Stardom Champion, uh, Goddess of the Fight World. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> it is an amazing <laughs> belt. That's great. Japan is re- Japan is really fun. Uh, uh, stardom, though, I, I will say Stardom I, earlier in the past year kind of did come under some, not fire necessarily. That was uh, the uh, promotion that had that famous uh, incident with those two Japanese female wrestlers where the one got uh, uh, beat up very severely, if you remember. Mm. Um, yeah, so it... But it's cool to see that they're doing cool stuff and different stuff. Also, uh, uh, in one of the matches on the U.S. show, uh, Melina of WWE fame made her first in-ring wrestling uh, appearance in, like, I want to say, like, five or six years, which is kind of cool. So, yeah, it seems like they're doing some really cool stuff. So they may be ones to definitely keep an eye on. Uh, something that not just people who follow Japanese wrestling get, can get into, but maybe even some some fans in the U.S. So that's always real cool. Uh, and the last kind of thing that I want to promote, uh, of a big thing that happened this past weekend, was AIW, uh, Absolute Intense Wrestling, their Big Trouble in Little Cleveland event, uh, which uh, sounded like a really, really fun show. Uh, Ricky Shane Page uh, successfully defending his uh, AIW title against Ray Rowe. Uh, which I heard was a phenomenal match. Uh, clip I showed you uh, and, and and made sure that you and the rest of the gang that went to Absolution saw was the rematch between Candice LeRae and Cedric Alexander. Uh, Candice picking up the win, getting a bit of revenge uh, on Cedric uh, in a big way, as sort showing right there. Uh, yeah, uh, it seemed really cool stuff. 
Uh, and the last also big thing, I guess, from that AIW show was Terry Funk was there. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Um, yeah, and, and it seemed like it was a huge success. Terry Funk didn't compete, obviously, but he got into a brawl with uh, uh, Eddie Kingston and the Duke, uh, which apparently was uh, really amazing. Uh, also on AIW's YouTube channel, they released a, I guess, sort of a short documentary style clip talking mm-hmm. to Terry Funk and uh, talking about the role of independent wrestling and, and the stuff like that. It's really cool stuff. I, it I is. It is. I, I love, I love that, you know, that they have the forethought to do those kinds of things. And those mini documentaries. And I didn't watch the entire thing, but the little bit I saw just looked tremendous. And it's got Terry Funk talking. He's like, listen, just go like Terry Funk. What do you think about wrestling? Why are you here? Why are you still doing this? And just get that and, and put that out there. Um, man, it's, there's a lot of in AIW of, I wish I thought of that. You know, kind of <laughs> kind of stuff going on right there, and, and, and you know, with a lot of these, I think you'd look at a lot of other promotions and man, man, I wish I, I I thought of that. But there is a lot of that that I think you know it, it probably wasn't AIW's original idea either. Uh, you know, so what can we use as in our work? You know, with Inspire Pro, with I, RWIWC, that can stick out. And I think AIW's, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's when a lot of us are looking at it, like, man, they're 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 doing this you know they're doing they're they're getting this stuff out there and it's tremendous you know and yeah. you know even when we're talking about seeing the guys with social media and 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 which wrestlers get it and which uh, wrestlers are helping the promotion get more out of there because of it so um they're definitely one of the ones to look at uh for that so definitely good good you gotta expand beyond the if you're not pulling in 1200 people like our friends uh, down there in Texas that we talked with today, uh, you got to maximize the two to three hundred that you are bringing in, mm-hmm. and make sure everybody else knows about it, and sell some DVDs, which I think is a big thing that a lot of them are looking at. You know, I mean, there's a lot of those. AIW is one of those. It's like I, I watch their shows, and I'm like, there's like two rows of people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're, they're they're not drawing large large numbers uh, when you look at it, but yet they're everywhere and you're like why what how are they getting these people you know um yeah. i will say with uh, this past weekend show it seemed like they did pack it in pretty well and i i know there were some pictures floating around somewhere but it looked like they drew really well for this event so uh it was really cool to see that um good 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 yeah because I, I can't tell from the video they showed you know I like this. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this this looks this looks like there's ten people in the crowd to see this like ridiculous moment. But again, uh, <laughs> it, 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 it's it's you know I don't think this is their full on shot. This is like a crowd shot or something. I think so. Yeah, yeah, that was so it, it was not like it was set up to notice. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. So, um, but no, I, I think that's real important too. There's a reason we shoot a certain way whenever we can in pro wrestling. It's just like let's look at this giant part of the crowd, not not these other parts of the crowd. You know, so. Definitely. But is that yeah, all absolutely. that's caught your attention this week, good sir? Uh, that's all from this past week. I do want to promote one thing that will be happening this weekend, uh, which uh, it's a selfish thing, but uh, uh, we mentioned WWN Live with Evolve Wrestling. Another company in the WWN Live sort of family is a company called Full Impact Pro, uh, otherwise known as FIP. Oh. Uh, they are holding a, a trios sort of tournament this weekend. Uh, for their Fallout event, it's, it, it's their six-man showcase tournament, uh, and I want to note it out particularly because uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling will actually be represented in that tournament, nice. which, I'm very, which should be very cool to see. Uh, Steve Arino, Davey Vega, and JoJo Bravo, all who we've had on the show before, uh, will be uh, be Team Inspire Pro Wrestling in that tournament. Uh, and I say, you know, if you're in Florida, obviously you can go check them out, but you can also check them out live uh, on iPay-Per-View at www.live.com. Uh, so you, if you know these guys and, and you know want to support them, you definitely uh, should do so uh, through their iPay per view. I know uh, uh, our good friends, the Submission Squad, are also involved in that tournament. So and there's some really cool teams from a bunch of different other promotions as well. So it, will, it should be a fun uh, two day event, Friday and Saturday, this coming uh, Friday and Saturday. Yeah, so. Awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome. And thank you to our guests tonight. Check them out at uh, mainEventProWrestling.com. Did I get that right? It's been so long I since I talked so, to them. Yes, and that's okay. Uh, also on Twitter, at OfficialMEBW. Help me get up to that two dots. And also on the Instagram as well as OfficialMEBW. 
EPW. That's that's great. That, that, that's a, that they're doing some good stuff down there, and I uh, can't wait to keep an eye out for them. And uh, they have a guy on their roster set named Big Daddy Yum Yum. Oh, you you've not heard of Big Daddy Yum Yum? I've not heard of Big Daddy Yum Yum. You ne- you must educate yeah. me on Big Daddy Yum Yum. Can, can we can, can we book yeah. him so I can just say his name a lot uh, on the show? Sure, why not? I mean, can we? I, mean, I will. I I, I I would plug the show like ten times during Wrestling Mayhem show. I'll be like tonight we talked to Big Daddy Yum Yum. Um, <laughs> I think that'll work out well. Uh, so thank you so much, Amen at Amen Two, please on the tweeters, InspireProWrestling.com. Uh, I'm at Sorgatron, and check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com, IndieWrestling.us, and of course, the Great Wrestling Mayhem Show.com. Subscribe, tweets, everything, and, uh, and, and and drop us a line. Join us live at SorgatronMedia.com every Tuesday night, uh, starting at 9 p.m. with the Wrestling Talk, and we usually get to this show about 11 p.m. Eastern Times. Amen. And our friends in Texas. Uh, so uh, you do the math, because it's too late for me to math right now. Thank you, everybody, and please support Indie Wrestling. Put a face to the floor, huh? Sick, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see it from the back down Act wild, steady sip and check now Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com Hi everyone, do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>